All right, and we're back. Um, so in the last video, I walked you through how to grab the requirements. So this again, this get requirement script uh, returns the maximum amount of threads you need to uh, for hacking the target server, uh, the strategy that's going to be executed by our ships, and then also the uh, the number of del uh, the delay uh, figures for each action in the sequence. And then once we grab the requirements, we then create our fleets. So the first thing we do is that we grab the allocation based off the requirements. And what this uh, get allocation does is that it calculates the number of uh, the actual number of threads required for uh, each action within the sequence. So number of weakened threads, number of grow threads and then number of hack threads that we need to allocate our ships. And then it what how it works is that it analyzes the number of ships, it looks at the requirements and then returns that figure. Um, after we grab those figures, we then generate a contract. And then as soon as we grab the contract, we then ready our fleets. So we start allocating ships to those, uh, to each of the actions within the sequence and then ensure that we have enough ships uh, to meet the contract. Uh, so going into this get allocation function, how we grab the, I guess the, this, the maximum numbers is uh, based off the strategy and also the maximum no thread limit. So when, when this function executes, we first look at the total number of threads we have within um, our uh, available ships. And how we do that is by just adding up all of the values, so all the values of the servers, so available RAM within the servers, and then um, calculating the, the number of threads it can have. And then down here, we do uh, a bit of a check if the amount of threads that the server requires is um, less than how much we have on hand, then we just allocate, um, I guess, the recommended values for them, mainly because we have enough resources to actually execute the, uh, the, the, the maximum requirements for that server. Um, if we don't have enough threads, so meaning that, um, you know, the, the server requires quite a lot more threads, we then look at the strategy and then if you remember the strategy um, it has information about the sequence and then resource allocation so for example allocation here is that for flog is that we allocate 30 percent of our threads on grow and 70 percent of them on weaken so we use those figures to find the ratio of uh, threads that we need to allocate for each of these actions. So for example, if the action in the sequence is W, we then find the total threads multiplied by the, uh, the, re the recommended portion for that, uh, for that action there. So we do that for each of these actions. And then by the end of this, we have um, information about the number of weekend grow and hack threads that we need to allocate uh, to actually execute the strategy. And then as soon as we have the uh, max the number of threads for each action, we then generate a, a contract. Um, and then we pass this contract to uh, our ready fleets um, function. How this uh, ready fleets function works is first we uh, sort the ships in, um, I guess, descending order. And how this, how this works is that it sorts our ships based off uh, the amount of RAM it has. So we want to make sure that we allocate uh, resources on the ship with the most resources first before we um, allocate them to the one with the least, just so that we, we have fewer um, loops and iterations. And then after that, I go through the, the sequence. So for each action within the sequence, we grab information about um, how we were uh, how we're gonna execute this action. Um, so we grab the delay from the list of delays we calculated from the requirements. Uh, we grab the symbol and then we grab the actual action that's passed onto the pirate script. Uh, and then we grab the maximum number of threads for this action. Um, 
and then we create a, a fleet object which has information about the action it's gonna execute and then all the ships inside it um, here we basically just allocate the ships on uh, the fleet uh, so we go through every single server within our sorted ships and then if the use threads is greater than the maximum threads meaning that we've already allocated the recommended amount of threads we need to allocate then we want to break out of this loop uh, otherwise we keep going um, so if the the server the ship is fully assigned meaning that it doesn't have any resources anymore uh, then we just skip that assigned ship and then he down here we just grab the uh, requirements of the execution requirements uh, so we grab the amount of RAM and from that RAM we then um, calculate the uh, maximum execution threads. We then look at the new use threads um, and then do a check. So uh, sometimes the, um, the server can execute way more than uh, what's actually required and just to make it much more efficient we do this uh, calculation here where we only grab whatever is needed and then after grabbing uh, the number of threads we need we then create our object here called assigned and what this assigned is is that it has information about uh, the amount of threads that it used and then the amount of leftover that it has and then these fields the the leftover is used to determine whether or not we're going to delete uh, the, the ship from our list of available ships. And then we push that, in, uh, that information, so the execution information, onto our fleet, so the group of ships. And then after assigning ships onto our fleet, uh, we then push that into our list of fleets. Uh, and then we do that for every single action within the sequence and by the end of it you're gonna have a group of uh, ships allocated to a single action um, and then also uh, I also return the assigned nodes just so that we can delete the ones that that has uh, been uh, fully used up already uh, and then after execute executing all the fleets and all the sh ships we then update our roster uh, where we delete the ones that uh, doesn't have anything left um, and I, I also put in the I guess this one uh, by one mark here mainly because if the thread allocation is 30 70 you can't really split that into a whole number so um, the minimum must be um, greater than one so we delete that so if there's still some usage left we then uh, update our mapping and then we do, uh, I guess, a, a sanity check. If there's still ships left that we can allocate, then we um, do an early break. Uh, and then we repeat the entire process again. Um, so just for bonus content, I left this um, launch free fleet script running for about three hours. And then I guess this is what happens, uh, what happened after that. So as you can see, this is the online production rate. Uh, I'm now producing uh, 426 million. Uh, it, it keeps going up and down, it's still normalizing, but uh, around 400 million mark per second. And it's also generated uh, $4 trillion, um, $4.5 trillion within that three hours. Uh, and then up here, you could see that the uh, my online production rate went from 500,000 to 12 million dollars per second. So it's pretty effective. Also, what you would notice here is that um, there's a few things that had been added since uh, I recorded the last video. Um, let's open up the, the terminal and then go through some of those new scripts. Uh, so the first one is APS Lite and what this uh, stands for is uh, Auto Purchase Server Lite and it's essentially dissimilar to the Auto Purchase uh, script but the only difference is that uh, it doesn't 
really uh, um, deploy the, the virus or anything like that. It just um, buys a server with the allocated RAM and then launches the um, launches the, the server. That's about it. All right. So one other thing that I did was improve uh, some of the logging. Uh, so I have one new script here, so called Watchtower. And if we, it, this one's already running and I always run that. But if we run that, you could see some really, really fancy uh, terminal logging here. So whenever we flog a server, uh, it's shown in red. Uh, whenever we grow a server or nourish the server, uh, it shows it in green. And then whenever we're plundering a server, we, it shows it in blue. And then it shows every single uh the status of every single server within our network and it's ordered by uh descending order so this the top one is the top priority and then the bottom one is the lower priority uh so that's what watchtower does it looks at um the strategies that our fleets are executing for each of the servers um, one other improvement that i made um, off camera is improving the logging of our launch fleets uh, script. So if we open this up again, this is fancier new uh, logging script. We, we no longer ha need the attack report, but uh, it shows you what every single ship is doing in real time. So it logs logs it out every time we sh um, we do something within our server and any changes that's, that's being made. Um, so that's that's pretty cool. So that's what I'm gonna show you guys. All right. So starting with the watchtower. Um, so to get the the fancy, um, I guess terminal print, um, you want to disable all the logs within uh, this script. So you can do that by typing in ns disable log all. And what this one will do is that it's gonna disable any default uh, logging that this game has. Um, so if you notice that whenever you run things like ns get money or ns get uh, player money or whatever it is, um, it has its own custom logging uh, inside it or pre-built logging inside it. Uh, but we want to just disable all of that because what we want to show in our logs are custom built uh, logs. And then down here, uh, it's essentially just going through um, our target. So it looks at all the targets and then prints them out. So it prints out the strategy and then um, has a variant. So variant uh, determines the color of the text. So if it's info, it's blue. If it's error, it's red. If it's success, it's green. And then there's also an another one, which is warning. Uh, and then I also assign a special icon for them just to be extra fancy. Uh, so for every strategy, we have a different icon and also a different um, variant. And then we just print it out as normal. So I print out the variant first um, and then the icon, the strategy, uh, and then all of that stuff uh, to produce this uh, effect here, which is very, very cool. Uh, and then here, launch fleets, um, there's a, quite a bit of uh, changes as well. So as you can see, I disabled all the default logs just so that we don't have that mess um, that the default scripts has. And then, um, and then one key change that I, I've made or a few key changes that I've made is first, I fixed a bug. I fixed a bug in, uh, in the script. Uh, so when you run the script based off, I guess, the, the previous um, two videos, you would notice that it's going to freeze your entire game. And the reason is because uh, before I had, I was using ns.hackanalyze threads to grab the number of threads, but this one has a bug. This, this thing has a bug. So if, um, if the amount of cash is very, very low number, it returns infinity and then what that that infinity is doing is that it's making the um, the script uh, get stuck on a on an infinite while loop um, just to be safe I just customized the hack threads to just look at the hack effect for a single node so what hack analyze does is that it grabs the percentage of the current money uh, whenever you do a hack 
and then um, and then we do uh, multiplication here so percent uh, multiplied be by the current money so hack taken and then I just assume that it's a uh, it's a linear uh, process um, but I know that in the next iteration it's probably just gonna readjust again so I'm not too worried about that uh, and then I added some guards here um, just so that it never gets stuck in an infinite while loop um, so if hack threads or grow threads or weaken threads are in infinity uh, we want to make sure that we assign default values to those rather than going ahead with the infinity so for hack threads if hack threads is infinity we don't want to hack or anything like that uh, mainly because it th this infinity only happens if um, the current money is very very small so we there's really no point in hacking it uh, in terms of weaken um, so weaken becomes infinite infinity if um, if the weaken effect is zero so it doesn't have any effect on the server and I already do this check here uh, but just to be even more safe I just do um, an extra check which uh, defaults the weaken threads to just be zero and then lastly grow threads um, so I encountered an issue where growth analyze still um, returned infinity um, but just to be extra secure um, if that does happen then I'm just gonna assign a default value of one uh, and then I just uh, do my normal calculation here hack weaken and grow all right so the second key change that I made is uh, via the logging uh, I removed all the uh, ns.print statements for each of those actions and what I was just just trying to focus on is uh, logging the ship action so we already have watchtower to um, log the state of every single target server and what strategies our fleets are executing to them uh, but what I want the launch fleets to focus on is what are the ships executing at the moment of time so I log the the ships action here and similar to how Watchtower works is that I allocate the variant and icon for each of these actions. Uh, and then I print it out. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. That's what I wanted to showcase. Um, so in the next video, I'm going to be um, trying to automate the way that we purchase our hacknet nodes as you can see i i never touched this hacknet node since the start of the game and uh yeah I, I don't know oh wait how did that happen how did i get level 88 uh, I, I don't even know maybe maybe i did um but yeah so we're, we're gonna try automate the process of purchasing this mainly because i don't want to click a bunch of buttons and i'm really lazy as hell and we have a lot of money um yeah and also one last thing before i go if we go to the active scripts here uh, you would see that the this launch fleet script uh, will only report that it's generating uh, x amount per second whenever you're online and then when you go offline and then come back you're gonna see that it's zero dollars and i don't know what it is but i don't think that um this game uh, accounts for uh, like automatically switching um, actions whenever you go online uh, offline so um, what we're gonna do the reason why I want to try focus um, auto purchasing the hacknet nodes is to uh, increase our offline production so uh, this launch fleet script scripts um, optimizes how much money we make online and then the offline production will be handled by the hacknet nodes um yeah so so that's that's it um i guess i'll see you guys in the next video